just as a new year, new decade opened up into February 2020, an idea sparked. A Holy Spirit fire began to burn. God's call, ever present in this place, found new voice, new ears, and new urgency. Pastor Sarah Merchant and the leaders of Stevensville United Methodist Church began contemplating how this space could continue to be a beacon of hope, a place that loved God and served others. It was not a new question on this corner of Stevensville, Montana. It was simply the question that needed to be asked and answered once again. Today, February 1st, 2021, just about a year later, marks a moment in the great legacy of God's call in this place, currently known as Stevensville United Methodist Church, with roots as the first school in this first Montana town. Our tour today captures a snapshot of where we've been, where we are going, but especially where we are in living into the ever-evolving legacy. So come through the red front door and know how God is calling and how we are partnering in that call. As we come through these front doors, we gaze upon the stained glass windows, a gift of beauty and meaning from those who came and reimagined the space into its current reality. Alongside these markers of the past, we see the particulars of 2021 with efforts to maintain health and safety through a pandemic. Good old hand sanitizer. Walking into the sanctuary, we experience a sacred space where music, prayer, laments, joy, and thanksgivings, sacraments, and the gospel has rung out. In preparation for uh, our limited large spaces, we moved some of the foods into storage and substituted them with movable chairs. Not only does this allow for careful physical distancing, but it also gives each group that meets some freedom and flexibility to curate a hospitable environment for their purposes. Worshippers, Bible study groups, AA, Al-Anon participants, and small concerts have utilized this space and its intention to serve God and love people. Sunday morning worship currently happens solely online through a live stream experience, so we've developed a few spots to capture the intimate possibility of worship while claiming our space as just right. A few extra lights and computers have taken this space into our very homes. What a gift of technology. While the building will be dark for a month while construction reroutes the power sources, that Holy Spirit fire will continue to blaze in ministry and worship outside the building through the church, its people of this community. We pray that we get to live into the full glory of this sacred setting in person for Easter 2021. We now move into a hallway that leads upstairs to classrooms once occupied by 19th century public school students and now loved by young children in the nursery and Sunday school rooms. Along the wall, we see the names of the current people who are this church, the body of Christ, who is known by God, whether they have name tags, whether they wear their name tags or not. What a joy to have them mirroring the stained glass windows where the names of previous church members are captured and remembered. Beyond our double doors, we enter into what is affectionately called the library. It's a labor of love for sure, that not only encompasses a great collection of books and resources curated currently by Mary Nelson, but it serves as the resting place for those who have a quick meeting or need to pick up study materials. Perhaps they're preparing for a, an appointment with WIC or simply getting out of the cold in order to receive care and service from the pastor or through the Loaves and Fishes Fund. The offices haven't changed much in structure, but the internal workings have evolved. We have new computers, a new accounting system, and increased awareness 
of our online office space and platform. Pastor Sarah also reconfigured her office so she could look outside. This certainly provides a little perspective and great reminders of the gorgeous place, this which is called the Bitterroot Valley. We jump through our secret side door from Pastor Sarah's office into the downstairs classroom, now the catch-all room. Between classroom materials, random fix-it tools, and the temporary kitchen, nearly all of our bases are covered. By time the building opens in the spring for Easter, the room will also contain two temporary bathrooms, a little studio inside it all. As we come back into the library, we're reminded again of the people, the prayers, the wishes and the memories that exist and hold value in this space as a way to mark the coming down of one building to make room for a new building, people were invited to write their prayers and memories and goals on a church shingle. May these continue to be a sweet reminder of where we've been, who we are now, and who and what we and this place might become. Finally, we move into the space that will come down in just a week. Already, efforts have been made to prepare the space and reclaim the pieces for future use. Dean, Lenny, Paul, John, Bob, Ben, and the Mallows, and many others have spent hours removing wainscoting, packing up, taking down light wells, and any other pieces that could be reused in the new building or shared with other groups. We hope that some of the wood can be a building blessing at the United Methodist Camp at Flathead Lake for their refurbishment projects. Habitat for Humanity retrieved cabinets and appliances for their resource store. Some appliances, such as the stove and refrigerator, have been stored for future use in the new building. Despite having just an empty shell left, we know how much care, intention, and love has been baked and crafted and offered out of this kitchen and fellowship space. We leave the building to take a last look at the whole of it all. We take in the historic building, our current reality and future aspiration, a home for a new community of young people and students and caregivers to learn and grow alongside the current community of faith. Perhaps you can read the sign which says Sapphire Early Learning Center, opening soon, fall 2021. We've taken that spark of an idea, let the Holy Spirit fan it, and faithfully, even if carefully, nervously, and optimistically, leaned into it as God's call. As we walk past these windows, where the names of the faithful and committed community members from er the early 20th century are written. The doctors, the teachers, the ranchers and homemakers, the grandparents and young people. We are reminded that each new generation can build on the legacy of those who've gone before them. These people in these windows represent a community who sought to live into something new, something vital, something vibrant, in the late 1920s. This group came from two different Methodist congregations that had been divided over a great theological difference concerning slavery, and yet they came together as one as they claimed God's call. They sought to serve God and serve and love others in a unique way that required discipline, grace, and seeing one another's dignity. It may have been risky and careful, but this move also included great faith and partnering with the Holy Spirit. Perhaps that was even the wisdom sown and nurtured in this space with its inception as a school in Stevensville, the first town in the state of Montana. Even though the students and staff outgrew their first home, they imbued it with a sense a sweet sense of curiosity, listening, desire to seek something new and good, 
true and worthy. We honor the past generations and dream for those to come. It is in the moment here, presently, where we make the choice of how to go. We have so much to be grateful for, so much to find wisdom and encouragement from, and so much to offer as we serve and love God and people. Together, we embrace the legacy of God's call.